I wanna take a moment to talk to current nutrition-related MLM distributors. The passionate health enthusiasts that have joined a variety of different companies, whether that's Speechbody, Arbon, Modair, It Works, the list goes on. The passionate health enthusiasts who have joined those to help people with their health and their wellness. I understand why joining a multi-level marketing company can be incredibly appealing. There is this vibrant community of like-minded people, people who want to help other people. This idea of being able to build a business with your own hours, one that moves along with you if you're moving around, and have this potential for just like setting up your life to not just be surviving, but thriving. I totally get it. There is an allure to being at the forefront of, of a kind of health movement, regardless of where it's coming from, to feeling like you're working with many different from people, a group of people, all with the same or similar goals. And just feeling like you are making a difference in the world. That drive you have, that desire you have to help people, that in my opinion is something that is special. It's a genuine passion for most of the people. From my experience, the people who I met in multi-level marketing, they really did, they really do have that goal and that desire to help people. It's clear, at least to me, that a lot of distributors have a big heart and a strong will. And those are really helpful and important attributes in any field, whether it is health related or not, but, but it is really important in the world of health and wellness. The steps that you've taken to build out the quote unquote opportunity with the multi-level marketing company, it shows initiative. It shows that you're willing to act on your ambitions. But I'm here to tell you that there are options beyond multi-level marketing that you might find are in a little bit more alignment with your values and your ethics when we kind of peel back some of the layers of multi-level marketing. And those options beyond multi-level marketing might be more aligned with your values and the impact that you want to have in the space. As a side note, this is not to sell any mentoring. I am not creating a nutrition certification course or anything like that. This is truly coming from a place of education and I hope to provide some guidance, some kind of support in moving, potentially if you want to, away from a nutrition related MLM. Everything that you have done within the time that you've spent with your nutrition related MLM company, that can be harnessed to kind of be this catalyst into a more sustainable and ethical kind of health business because there are some very real like pathways to practicing in an ethical and credible based way. So if you are ready to explore a little bit of that, if all that sounds good to you, let's go. Hi folks, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kat, I'm a licensed registered dietitian nutritionist and on this channel I like to talk about weight inclusive and weight neutral focused approaches to health as well as diving into scammy and in my opinion unethical nutrition related businesses, products, mostly nutrition related MLMs and other fear mongering nutrition related claims. Now I am also someone who was involved in a multi-level marketing company. I was halfway or I got halfway up the marketing plan within the first six to seven months that I was in and I knew what I needed to do in order to continue. I knew what had to be done in order to get to the next level and the level after that. But it was around then when I started to see a little bit more red flags and hearing other people's story is where I kind of took a step back and realized that I was not okay with doing the things I needed to do in order to make it. I just didn't feel like all of the marketing around it really aligned with my values. And around that time, I was experiencing what I believe to be cognitive dissonance. Correct me if I am misusing that term, but I was really uncomfortable. I was holding these kind of two beliefs conflicting beliefs simultaneously. And it was a very confusing and frustrating time period. I was seeing what MLM was doing to others at that same time. I hadn't really, I had had like my experience wasn't the best, but it also wasn't like terrible. There are so many people who've had like really more challenging experiences with their time in MLM. But mine was pretty good. I had seen that success in that short amount of time, but there was still that kind of 
those beliefs going ahead with one another. And despite having the best intentions of joining and why I wanted to join, it just was not in alignment anymore. But the time that I spent in multi-level marketing did show me that many of the people, if not most of the people, have good intentions and they do want to help people. And not really recognizing multi-level marketing for what it truly is, an unsustainable and deeply flawed business model that is so often paired with quite a bit of psychological manipulation. MLM have a tiered system and in that tiered system the profit is hardly from the sales itself but significantly more so based on from the sales of the people recruited the structure means that the people who are at the top benefit while the people who are doing the selling here and there are the ones that often struggle to make any profit and they will continue to be there and continue to do that unless they build a team underneath them. The hard truth around multiple marketing is that the majority of people who join are not able to make a sustainable income, regardless of the amount of people who they're reaching out to and for like all of the hard work that they're doing. It's just not a sustainable business model. And it's not only that as an issue with the structure piece, but the structure itself can be at odds with a lot of ethical practices. One of those is a financial incentive over health outcomes. So MLM distributors typically earn money through commissions from the products that are sold or from the products that are sold from the distributors underneath them who they recruited. The primary motivation for the business side of things, regardless of how much someone wants to just like help individuals, the primary incentive that is built into it is to sell product or recruit those team members to sell more product. And it's focusing on that rather than focusing on the health outcomes of the individual. And because of that, that can lead to some biased and or non-individualized health recommendations. We'll get on health recommendations in a little bit. There's a note about that. But the focus on just selling the product itself can really increase that bias and that focus and trying to make that product fit the customer instead of looking at the person and helping them to find something that is most beneficial for them. Now, even if they were to do that on the flip side, there is typically a lack of qualified expertise. Health advice ideally should come from health professionals, certified licensed professionals those people who have the necessary training and understanding of the complex needs of individuals, not using or not relying on their own personal experiences or anecdotes. MLM structures, and I'm talking about the nutrition ones here, they enable their distributors to make specific health recommendations without a deep understanding of health and nutrition and science to sell products and provide health advice. And that can be very misleading and very harmful. The outcomes of the harm of that can range so much, but it can range from just this kind of misinformation that's harming one's relationship with food, and it can lead all the way into organ damage or interactions with that person's medication. One of the other concerns is a kind of one size fits all approach. MLM companies often kind of tout their benefits or their products or their programs benefits as this kind of like one size fits all program or product that everybody can benefit from. They typically ignore the nuances, the individual, the differences in nutrition and health when it comes to people and their needs. There is also the conflict of interest. A distributor, it's really easy for a distributor, even not intentionally. I don't think most, again, most people I think are coming from it with good intentions. But even if a product is not maybe the best fit for a potential customer, there is is a strong incentive, a push, whether from corporate or from upline to really make that sale when it might not be in the best interest of that customer. That can like supersede, I don't know if that's the right word, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like that can be the, the, the pathway that they choose rather than the other option of providing accurate health advice, like recommended health advice, because 
they're not incentivized to do that so much. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but I'm saying that I have seen it happen in a variety of different multi-marketing companies. There are also some regulatory concerns. So when you are a health professional, you are like bound by what you sign with like the code of ethics and those are designed to protect the public. Now, MLMs, while some of them, or most of them I would say, they do have something that you sign to pretty much say that you're gonna stay within like guidelines and not cause the company to get sued, they might not adhere to the same like standards. And that could potentially not be the most beneficial when looking at like a public health view regarding like misinformation or the promotion of products that just aren't really needed for helping someone with their health, that they could better spend that time and energy focused on things that would make a bigger impact on that customer's health. In summary, the MLM business model can be fundamentally at odds with ethical distribution of health information due to its focus on sales and recruitment, the non-expert advice, the potential for misinformation, the conflicts of interest, and the lack of regulatory oversight, all of which can negatively impact the health and wellness of the customer. And even within the dieting industry, we can't ignore that either. Far too often there are products that make these kind of big claims or distributors who make the big claims about the products without the like actual evidence, the scientific backing. This not only misleads clients, but it can perpetuate this kind of diet culture that really does more harm than good when you look at the statistics around dieting and consistency and diet cycling and weight cycling and the stress that that puts on the body. And then there's also the pressure on coaches from their upline or from the goals that they're trying to meet to rank up, uh, from corporates, the constant drive to sell product and to recruit people on to sell product. That can impact the mental well-being of distributors. Their experience can impact their finances, their emotional stress, well-being, their relationships, their relationships within their family and those who they care about. Like it's not, the business model itself can really easily bleed into the rest of their life. The identity of distributors can so often become like one with the company. In my opinion, being a trusted health advocate, a coach of some kind, should not be about quotas and commissions. It's about helping to equip people with the knowledge and the tools to make lifelong changes, not just focused on quick fixes around a specific product that they just kind of have to continue buying. If you are a nutrition-related MLM coach and you are feeling a little bit if you're watching this video then you might already have some kind of red flags and are just maybe putting some feelers out for the potential idea of stepping away from your multi-level marketing company there are alternatives that can help be in alignment with your values and are consistent with still being involved in people's life, in their health, genuinely helping others. So let's shift into that part. When we talk about nutrition and health, it really needs to be on a foundation, a foundation of science, a foundation of evidence, evidence-based practice, not built on passing trends or the latest products. Potential harm from misinformation, health misinformation is very real. When individuals who are not qualified to give out health information do give out health information, they can put other people at risk, like unintentionally. That advice can lead to some unhealthy behaviors, discouragement from like evidence-based medical treatments, and can have dangerous consequences. Nutrition and health advice should not be built on anecdotal information, like one's own personal experience with that. That can certainly play an important role but that is not what in my opinion it should be built on that is why it is really important for health professionals to really commit to lifelong learning to stay up to date with the latest research and be humble enough to adjust recommendations based off that so if you are in a nutrition related MLM and you're looking at the idea, kind of putting your feelers out to step away from that into something that is both credible and fulfilling, let me give you some ideas of what that might look like. 
So one of the alternatives is becoming a national board certified health and wellness coach. This credential, it can be achieved through a variety of different programs. Like those programs have to meet standards and those standards are gonna be based around the actual like subjects, the information, but also like mentoring and one-on-one -on -one time. Currently, national board certified health and wellness coaches, like if they are working with some like healthcare organizations, they can use a code to be billed by insurance or bill it to insurance. So like it, it gives some legitimacy. Like dietitians have been able to provide billable services to insurance like long as I can remember, way before I became one. But the idea of insurance is taking health and wellness coaching from health and wellness coaches hasn't been a thing until recently. Now it's not for all of them and it depends on like how you're working like with a healthcare facility, but that area is growing and there's a lot being done. I wanted to mention that because I think it does give more credibility to the idea of health and wellness coaching, especially because it is board certified. And I do wanna point out that there is that difference between being board certified and being certified. The certification, any kind of certification, like at least in the health and wellness field, it doesn't really, there's no set standard, right? So like I can make a, course and I can have people go through it in like a day or a weekend and they can technically say that they're certified. They would be able to say that they are a like certified nutritionist because that is not a protected title. But if you are a board certified health and wellness coach, that means that you have not only gone through one of those programs that has those standards, but you've also taken a test at an actual like professional testing center. And there are also standards for continuing education. I wanted to point out or shout out that Precision Nutrition is one of the programs that does have a national board certified health and wellness coaching program. I think that they do a really great job of really focusing on staying within the scope of practice and how people can really utilize their coaching skills. That is a great option that I have recommended to a variety of people. There are many programs that you are able to do that board certification through, but they can have a little bit of like variances. And I really, really appreciate Precision Nutrition, especially with how they just overall encompass the social determinants of health and everything that I really believe plays a huge role, not just like I believe, but like evidence-based wise is really important to take into consideration when talking about health and um, the promotion of it. Now, if your passion lies more within the science side of things, like if you want to help with more medical concerns, pursuing the path of becoming a registered dietitian is something that I highly recommend. Now, this pathway does require more rigorous academic um, and training involvement. Now you might be asking like what is the difference between a registered dietitian and a nutrition coach? And I do want to say that some registered dietitians can also identify or want to identify as a nutrition coach. So registered dietitians can do a variety of different, they can go a different pathway and not work with people one-on-one, -on -one, right? Like there are many dietitians involved in research or in more of like community nutrition and either work with people one-on-one -on -one or not. Same thing with clinical or maybe they work in a school. There's just so many different avenues. Basically, Registered dietitians are licensed professionals able to assess and treat medical nutrition related problems. One of the key aspects of a registered dietitian's area of practice is medical nutrition therapy. Now this is a therapeutic approach that is meant to be supportive or help in some way of an issue, kind of a medical concern, medical issue going on. Registered dietitians are able to tailor an intake for the management of a chronic disease. The scope of practice of a registered dietitian not only only focuses on preventative nutrition, but also that treatment of dietary management of disease. The critical point is that dietitians can legally do that versus health coaches who that would be out of the scope of practice and most places illegal. Now nutrition coaches generally focus on guiding people towards their health and wellness goals. They might offer more generic advice, but they cannot prescribe specific diets or actions to treat uh, specific medical conditions. And so for dietitians who are also health coaches, they can bring both of those aspects together. They can bring their clinical expertise alongside of their coaching expertise to kind of help that person move forward. 
versus coaches who are very important still, but going to be more of that supportive like cheerleader for general wellness and helping you to make lifestyle changes. Sometimes board certified health and wellness coaches will take the information provided by a registered dietitian who they're working with and help that client to implement it, kind of breaking it down into what is more realistic or sustainable for that person, meeting them one-on-one. So there are ways that both of those kind of roles can work together. So in essence, dietitians are equipped with that clinical side of things. They can also be equipped with that health coaching side of things too. In my opinion, both play valuable roles. So kind of wrapping it up with some potential next steps. If you are in an MLM and you're looking to make a change, consider where you want to be in your career a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. If it is not reaching out to people and going for no, then that might be your first step or first reason for maybe considering leaving. If you are ready to move on from MLMs, just know that there are other opportunities that provide value. Start by looking into becoming a board certified health and wellness coach or looking into the path of becoming a registered dietitian. If you have any questions or just want someone to talk to, I am not going to berate you or anything for being in a company multi-level marketing company. I remember my experience in one. I won't preach to you or anything like that, but feel free to reach out. So that wraps it up for this video. In my time of speaking, it's gotten dark outside. So I hope the lighting is not too distracting, but please leave a like if you found this video helpful. Please consider sharing and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already, I'd greatly appreciate that. And remember, you can strive for help without subscribing to diet culture or being part of multi-level marketing. I'll see you later, bye.